Welcome to Toffee TV, Monday the 19th of July. It is the Daily Live Extra. It is roasting outside and it's roasting in the studio. Uh, but we will get on with it. Hope you all had a good weekend. Everton won another game of football at the weekend. Uh, this time against Blackburn Rovers. Great to see John philippe Gabamon scoring uh, the winner in that one. Um, and obviously lots of uh, transfer stuff over the weekend. Uh, all low-key in terms of fees and stuff, uh, which is pretty much what is expected at the moment until we can get a sale in or rules change or or whatever. Um, but <clears throat> obviously uh, the stuff broke on Saturday regarding Asmir Begovic, who is now an Everton player. He is going to be uh, unveiled today, I imagine, at some time. Um, this afternoon Everton will announce the signing of Begovic from Bournemouth as the backup goalkeeper. Uh, Evan had looked around at other keepers, obviously. Uh, Sergio Romero was one who was mentioned quite regularly. Um, Robin Olsen, I think, the fee and stuff like that made it. And obviously not being here, uh, Rafa Benitez not being here last season with Olsen. And then having a look at uh, Begovic was where they arrived. And he, you know, we've got him on smaller wages, number two to Pickford. I know some people just really aren't happy with that, but what it does is... It allows Joe Virginia to go out on loan uh, to build up his profile, really. I think he stepped in ably last season, but to be the, the guaranteed number two, I'm not convinced yet. I'd like to see him have a season. And if Everton can get him alone where he's going to play, and th this is the difficulty, um, but if we can get him alone where he's going to play regularly, then I guess we can assess where he is. And if we get to next summer and he's had a good, solid season, then maybe Rafa Benitez will think, well, He's going to be the number two and Begovic has dropped to number three um, for the season and then obviously be released. I think he signed a two-year deal. So that was that. Um, we've then moved on, obviously, to Andros Townsend, uh, who is having a medical today at Everton. Um, both players are expected to make the trip to Florida when the club departs for the United States uh, later in the week. Both expected to be on the plane. Um, obviously, Townsend, barring any issue with the medical, will become an Everton player probably in the next 24 hours and then will be off to America with the, the side, uh, with the, the squad. So, uh, on Andros Townsend, free transfer, he's out of contract. Uh, Premier League experience, pads the squad out. Um, I've seen a couple of Crystal Palace fans and high-profile ones saying... He's a hard worker, he's very disciplined, you know, good in the group, got a goal in him. I know he's not who most Evertonians would have gone for and would have wanted, but, you know, come in, fresh, you know, fresh slate, basically, come in and just add to the squad. It looks as though, well, Everton probably will be moving Bernard on. So, therefore, Townsend coming in, is he better suited to the Premier League than Bernard? Probably. And, therefore, that kind of makes it, Almost a like for like, but maybe, maybe in terms of balance, maybe he's better suited to the squad than Bernard is right now. So maybe if you looked at it that way, you could kind of go, yeah, okay, understand what Rafa Benitez is trying to do there. Um, and then obviously Damari Gray was one that was was got out yesterday as well. Everton, I know, had been looking at him since last week. Um, One point five million is the release fee on that. So 25, just turned 25 years of age, uh, can be excellent on his day, got a lot of pace about him. End product's not brilliant, but something to work on. Everton haven't got enough players who can travel with the ball at any kind of pace. We all know that, we'll all sit here as whoever we are and agree that. I think anyone watching Everton would agree that. So one and a half million pound isn't a big outlay in the slightest, is it? Um, and to fill the squad out with those two wingers, uh, and obviously a backup goalkeeper, I think is good business really for Everton at an outlay in terms of transfer fees of 1.5 million. I don't really think we can moan too much about that. Yes, we know we need quality, we know that. Uh, and the club are trying to do it. We've seen a um, story in The Athletic today, um, backing up what we've said as well around the likes of Leon Bailey. Everton have been heavily watching him over the last couple of years. Me personally, anyone who watches this will know that I haven't shut up about him, you're probably all bored of that. But he would be one I think will change a lot of things for Evan. I think he's a fantastic prospect, got pace to burn, uh, can go by a player, got a goal in him as well. 
Uh, Chuck Weezy's another one who Everton have had a little look at. Dwight McNeil um, has, has now been mentioned as well. Uh, he's a little bit more of a technical player rather than a runner for me, and I'm not as hot on him as I am on Bailey, that's for sure. Uh, but you can see that Everton are looking to do other deals as well. Obviously, money and the financial regulations make it difficult at the minute. I do believe there's been some movements at last in the Denzel Dumfries stuff um, that had it an impasse over the last couple of weeks. It looked as though he was off to Milan, uh, into Milan. But it looks like there's been a little bit of a shifting on on both sides now. Mini Raiola getting him, you know, is involved in that, so you know what he's trying to do first and foremost. But all of a sudden, Dumfries having looked like it wasn't really likely to happen has now moved back into there's a chance it could happen. And I think if Everton could get him in, I think that makes a big difference as well. So let's crack on with it. And it, it's trying to attract money in, isn't it? It's trying to attract people to come in and take some of our players. Um, so let's see. Let's have a little look at what's going on in the comments. Anyway, Wildlife says, I guess Moyes and Richie are staying. And well, Richie was always staying. Uh, that was that was the thing anyway. Uh, and I think once Everton allowed him to go to the Olympics, it was on the basis that basically he comes back and gets his head down. Um, and I think what Everton would try to do is... See, if Everton could make a couple of sales this summer and bring in a couple of bigger players um, with the money then I think we could plan for Richarlison leaving next summer if he has a good summer, um, a good season rather, and we could plan that. But I don't think it was ever on the cards this year, to be honest. Uh, Moise Keane, I think if the right offer comes in, he'll be allowed to go. I think it's as simple as that. Everton will be looking for 35 to 40 million, which they can then turn into um, good down payments on two to three players. If you got rid of Keane, you can get two to three quality players with that money and plan properly, and I think that's what Everton will be trying to do. Uh, Thomas Beckham says, afternoon, mate, is Dumfries going to happen? Well, like I said before, Thomas, there's been a, a changing in the winds with that, which means that it's, the possibility again is back on. Uh, I think he'd be a good signing for Everton, definitely. Um, but there are other right-backs who they will be looking at as well. Hello to Kevin, hello to two. Um, JF says Everton are roasting us with these signings. Uh, James Dunlop says I'll give Townsend the chance, but it's a bit like signing Walcott back. I know what, but what I mean, James, I get it, right? I get it, but I think his delivery is better than Theo Walcott's. Walcott had a little bit more, um, a little bit more explosive pace, didn't he, than what Andros Townsend's got. It's about the squad. We often complained, didn't we, last season from the bench. I think had we had Theo Walcott, ironically, last season on the bench, I think we'd have had an opportunity to uh, to get some more points at times because we didn't really have anything when you looked at the bench in wide areas. Would I have got Andros Townsend? If you'd have said to me a couple of weeks ago, should we go for Andros Townsend? I'd have said, probably not. It's, it's the reality. We've got to be really. It's come a little bit left field. It's again. It's looking around at what's available and going. Well, we can we can pad the squad out with this player and that player on freeze. Uh, I get a lot of people will be scratching their heads and all that, but got to just let's see how it fits together, haven't you? We've got other players where we've been delighted with, haven't we? And they've not worked. So let's just see what happens. Uh, Michael Barry says hello, Baz mate. Hope you're good. Looks like it's starting to kick off on the transfer front. I think. I think Benitez has had a, a couple of weeks now to assess what's there. He's watched two games. Um, he can see, I think, that there's good quality in the squad. And don't forget, this is a squad that still hasn't had um, Richarlison, Luca Dean or Dominic Calvert-Lewin in it as well, uh, for what he's seen. There's injuries, obviously, to a couple of the younger players. I think he'd like to have had a look at Tyler Onyango and Ellis Sims, both recovering from surgery, so he's not had a chance to look at those lads yet as well. Um, Jared Branthwaite as well, just getting back. So he's had a look and he's seen that what quite kind of what we've seen, and he's planning for it. And I think you have to give him a little bit of credit for that, the way he's planning for that. Uh, Chris Spurrier has said, "Look at this tan," and Josh love it. Yeah, it, it's been very warm, hasn't it? I've been out all over the weekend in Wales in the sun. Um, Ota says, "If we get McNeil, Bailey, Dumfries, and Townsend, we're looking sharp next season." Well, it's options, isn't it? It's absolutely options, which we haven't got any. Um, Nathan says, what are your thoughts on Towns ending great? Yeah, the good squad players, mate. It's, again, not for me, not absolutely first choice. I think I think Damari Gray 
has always been um, mad. Like he's got the talent and there's there's the pace there. He's never never quite knitted it together for Leicester. I know he was good for Birmingham. He's never quite knitted it together for Leicester for one reason or another. Um, and also they've got good players in wide areas as well. So for him, it's it's been a little bit hit and miss, but. We haven't got a player like that in our squad. So when you haven't got players like that in your squad and you add them, then you've got to kind of go with that, haven't you, and see what we can do with it. You know, we, he comes in and gives us something that we've not got and creates stuff, then I think it's, it's a decent sign. Mark D says, Townsend and Grace squad players, absolutely. Um, James says, need some players gone to free up wages. Yeah, we do. But don't forget, you know, Walcott's gone off the wage bill, balassi has gone off the wage bill, Bezic has gone off the wage bill, a couple of the younger players have gone as well. Um, and don't forget, we're, got, we're looking to get rid of Bernard. I think John Joe Kenny's available to go. So there's players, you know, they'll listen to offers for Fabian Delft, probably Andre Gomez too. So there will be some wages clawed back as well. Um, so, yeah. Uh, where are we here? RCO2 says, I think this is a very sensible mood. Uh, I was saying yesterday on Reddit, Reddit numbers wide, Gray is better than Zaha and Townsend is better than Adama. Two of them will cost one and a half million and the other two cost 70 million. 70 million each, I think they want. Um, yeah, listen, you can look at numbers and, and go through them and say, he'll do that. It's up. You, it's difficult with transfers because you look at players sometimes and go, it's going to be brilliant, let's get him in, he's going to be fantastic. And he might come in and not really do anything. So you, you have to just take it at face value and go, right, the manager knows we need players in wide areas. One thing Andros Townsend does very well is he runs at people. and it, Well, two things, isn't it? He runs at people and he puts a good delivery into the box. Uh, we've got one of the best headers, if not the best header of the ball in the Premier League. So give him some quality crosses. Get him, you know, get him on the end of things and he might get more goals or he'll cause problems and we'll score more goals from it. So that's how you have to look at it. Factually. Yeah, factually the best header, as Ned said. So it's a give him the right the right delivery, the right service. Who used to say Dominic Calvert-Loon can't get 25 Premier League goals next season if we create for him? That's what the managers had to look at. Uh, Connor says, uh, would still want us to sign a quality winger even after Townsend and Gray. Don't think they're good enough for first team starting places. It's all about the system. I absolutely, you know, Leon Bailey is, you know, the Athletic have reported it this morning. It's been widely reported anyway. We've said it many times. Everton won him. Everton have been looking at him. If you could get someone like him, then yeah, he's a game changer as well. Um, if you had a runner on the right like Dumfries, then. It's gonna be, it's gonna be one of those things, isn't it? You're gonna get those attacking options if you've got a runner and someone cutting in, and it's Dumfries on the right hand side. You've got this with. If you've got someone like Leon Bailey that can go beyond and cut back in and score himself or deliver, then we're gonna carve teams open. We're gonna create more opportunities for the likes of Dominic Calvert Lewin and Richarlison, who, who didn't get any more, any anything really last season. So you know there were so many games where we looked at the bench last season, and you were just like. Yeah, there's nothing that is going to change this. Whereas these two players, albeit for me, yes, the more squad players, there'd be two players who you'd look and go, we could get him on and he, we know what he's going to do. Damari Gray's going to get the ball and run at people. Andros Townsend's going to kind of do the same and, and put deliveries in. So it's a little bit of difference, whereas we didn't really have anything last season when you looked at that bench. Uh, Jake Ablett says, considering... We have zero wingers. I can't understand how fans turn their nose up to natural wingers who will add squad depth and competition as well as crosses into the box for the best header of the ball in the Premier League. Hopefully these players are desperate to play for Everton too, which is another thing that's gone wrong in the last few years. Yeah, definitely. Um, where are we? Arcio 2 says, Baz Gray has the dribbling stats of Adama but actually has an end product and Townsend has the best defensive stats of any winger in Europe. Okay. Uh, we need more quality, but yes, do look at the bench last season, says Jay. Absolutely. Ben says, Baz, if we watched Bailey for years, why haven't we gone for it? Surely last year would have been the time. Money. Quite simply, money, isn't it? Um, 
there was a limited amount of money last summer. Carlo wanted a certain type of... He wanted Hammers. He wanted Alan. Uh, we know we needed the midfield player in the Corey. And we needed the centre-back. And he got Ben Godfrey. So had the money been available, we would have gone for it. So I wish we would have, to be honest with you, mate. Uh, Lions, he says, uh, Baz Townsend gave my respect when he defended Jordan Pickford on Talk Sports during the Euros. Deserves a shout just for that, mate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dean says, the two new lads have better numbers than a Wobie and Bernard. For that outlay, it's great business. Uh, Paz says, these are fantastic moves, especially on one-year deals for Begovic and Townsend. Keeps our powder dry for next year when a lot more wages will go off the books and under-23s will be in a better position. I think it's two years for them, but we'll know when it's confirmed. Um, but yeah, listen, getting people in like this for no outlay is a lot more sensible than giving people three-year deals and paying money for them uh, and they don't want to contribute. Um, obviously, it's always a risk. You, you're getting a 30-year-old player, you know, as he still got it in. And well, this, to be honest, this is Andros Townsend will be... He played for Spurs, so they're a big club, but Everton will be just as big as Spurs, so bigger than Newcastle, bigger than Crystal Palace's last two clubs. Um, and it's probably at an, you know, a time in his career when he didn't expect this to happen. Um, so for him, you know, he will be excited to come here for sure. Uh, Begovic again, he was at Bournemouth. I know he's been at Chelsea, but it's a fella that's been at Stoke. He's been on loan at Milan as well, hasn't he? And um, Carabeg as well. So for him... Coming in, you know, again, that's a, it's a fresh thing for him. It'll it'll pick him up. It'll pick Pickford up as well. Um, for no money, really. I don't think we can complain. Uh, Adam says, obviously not the best, but if bringing a few less high-profile players means we can release more funds for better players, I'm all for it. Uh, Adam says, hope to see Andy Carroll, Chris Smalling and Christian Atsu through the door next. Uh, Gare says, having one of the best editors in the ball in the league and trying to add players who can cross the ball seems a very good idea. Who in the squad could deliver a proper cross for Calvert-Lewin? Dean and maybe Hammers if he's playing wide. Townsend and Gray might not be sexy names to excite supporters, but it looks like the start of building a squad, creating a style of play, something we've lacked for so long. If we could add Dumfries and Bailey on top of that, that would be a very good window for incoming deals. Yeah, totally agree. You've got to look at the whole thing. We can look at players and go, wouldn't have him. That's not who I want. He's not as good as him. But if it kind of fits the plan and it works, that's what we want, don't we? We've threw money up the wall trying to get these players in, going, oh, he'll be boss, we'll get him in, we'll get him. And it's not worked. We've been doing nothing for years. We've got to have a structure, a way of playing, a plan. And then, to you know, to get a good team, you get players in who not everybody fancies. And if you can piece them parts together, you end up with a good side. And that's what we want, don't we? Uh, Keith says, simply good business. Contract to suit the club. Squad improvements. Right-hand side improved. Bailey would be a dream signing. Pace, good crosses. Haven't had that for years. Dumfries or Bacher at right back. And that's the right-hand side sorted. No Mbappé or Lewandowski coming this summer. Please tell those Twitter followers, followers of yours. Um, okay, uh, Paul Cruz Design says Townsend and Gray will be an improvement on our bench players. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Cam says, uh, afternoon lads, thinking McNeil will be a good sign and personally, hopefully Bailey though. Yeah, Cam, he's a good footballer, but he's, he's just not explosive for me. And I think we need... I think we need some explosive players. I don't think we've got enough of them. Uh, McNeil is a nice footballer. Fair play. But, you know, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, Froon Pinto says we should sign all the Lever Cousins wingers. Yep, the Arby Bailey angry, 100%. Uh, Ethan, or Ethan with an X, says Hi, Baz, would you like to see a Wobie being used more as a number 10 instead of being stuck out wide this upcoming season? Um, yeah, I, I think I would because I don't think he offers absolutely anything out wide. Um, I just can't see it. I can't see it. We've, we've given him a go out there. He doesn't go beyond and cut the ball back. Uh, he doesn't really get in behind. He comes in field all the time, so I think he naturally wants to play in that role. 
Um, maybe if it's a, a 4 2 3 1, then maybe Benitez, if Hammer stays as well, maybe those two will get a go behind the striker. Maybe. And Awobi could force himself in there. Um, I still think if anybody came in with a bid, Everton would let Awobi go. Definitely. But if he's going to stay, then maybe for him he's better off being through the middle. Um, Semi Charm Life says, Greetings, fellow Blues. Dominic Hughes says, All right, Baz, love these daily shows. Cheers, mate. Um, Gary Burns not impressed with the shopping. That's fine. Uh, Derek Polahonki says, Good start to the transfers if you asked me. Fair enough. Dominic Hughes says, Get the likes up, everyone. Uh, Daniel Hampson says, uh, Yes, Baz, hope you're good. Uh, who do you think we'll actually sign? Well, after these players, or I think, I think for Everton, it's get these in now, pad that squad out, have a structure, see if we can create some money either from another sponsorship deal or whatever, uh, or see if we can we can trade a couple of people out, and then you can move on to who are your real priorities. And I think the manager, well, the, the club, as in Marcel Brand as well, they want. Um, Obviously, like I said at right at the start, the Dumfries stuff is a bit more positive now. It's a lot more positive than it was a week ago. If they could get Denzel Dumfries in, then there's your right back sorted. Uh, and then you're looking ahead then and going, well, in an ideal world, you'd want a right winger, which is what they want, and you'd want another centre forward, uh, especially if you sell Moise Keane. Um, and if I'm being greedy, I want another centre midfield player. And I want to chase a couple of what we've got. So that's that's what we'll have to we'll, we're working on at the moment, aren't we? We're just working on trying to get that squad padded out and be able to to move players uh, on and therefore go after the other stuff. Um, Jack Edwards says, "Can Bailey play on the right?" Yeah, that's where he plays generally for Leverkusen. Cuts in on that left foot. Fantastic. Um, JS says, I get that we're broke, so where's the money coming from? For me? Well, we're not broke, JS. It's the, the financial regulations. It's what the league allows you to spend. If, the, those, if those restrictions weren't there, Everton would be spending big money because that's what Mishiri and Usmanov want to do. The problem is the structure, the finances, the, the regulations are all, all there to stop you doing it. So we have to be clever. Someone like Dumfries, if it's between 15 and 20 million, it's a structured deal. Therefore, you can pay that over four years and that becomes 5 million a year, which Everton can afford. We couldn't sign, we couldn't sign Dwight McNeil now, I don't imagine. I think Burnley would want 25, 30 million. Uh, I think Bailey is 35 to 40 million. So those deals will quite clearly probably rely on uh, a sale unless Everton have got a big sponsorship deal coming from somewhere but in general you will be relying on a sale to get those kind of players uh, Mark D says Andre Frank Zambo and Guisha from Fulham should be available for a reasonable they'll want 25 million for him but I would have Anguisha every day of the week uh, Johnny Hodgson says balance on the wings with the likes of Gray and Townsend will bring Dean back to scoring goals and should allow him to create even more assists big season for the world's best left back yeah, last season, think about it, we, we started off brilliantly. Seamus was flying and we had a nice little bit of balance either side. But then Coleman, got he had three injuries in the opening 10 weeks of the season. So we was out the game. You know, we tried Ben Godfrey at right back and Iwobi went there and we just couldn't get that balance, which meant that teams just looked at Luca Dean and were, just stop him and you, you've cut out half the creativity. Um, and then obviously Dean got injured. And we had to then go to playing more defensive style. And then Ancelotti never, ever went back to being expansive, really. Um, and so if you've got balance on both sides, teams find it difficult to, to who to stop. Do we stop the left-hand side? Do we stop the right-hand side? It becomes more of a problem for them. Um, Pags, uh, sorry, P-A-G, uh, P-A-G-J-S says, Sensible signings, Townsend and Gray. I will be can't cross a ball. Bernard likes to cut inside and doesn't have any end product. Correct. Um, 
there, are we? True Vera says, isn't John Philippe Gabamon more competition for Alan? Um, no, because I think Alan likes to go off and press, doesn't he? And you want someone who's going to operate in front of the back four as um, and get hold of the ball, and that's what John Philippe Gabamon likes to do. Certainly, what he did for Mainz. Um, but it's options, isn't it? It's options. If you've got those, if you've got Alan Decore and John Philippe Gabamon fully fit, then you can either play them in the three in midfield and play four three three, or you can play a four two three one, and one of them sits on the bench and and has got to try to move the other one out. Or you could play Alan and Gabamon holding, and Decore could be the one behind the forward joining in, um, which is what he kind of what he did for Watford when he had someone he was was protecting for him, off he went into the box and that's why we got six goals a season for him centre mid, so it's having those options as well. Um, yes, it renders the likes of Delph, Gomez, Tom Davies a little bit redundant, but you need a squad. Um, so that's why I think, I mean, it's been put out there as well that Everton would listen to offers for those three players. Um, I think Gomez and Delph, they definitely listen to offers for um, so yeah uh, Chris says hey, Baz you know why we didn't have a sleeve sponsor last season and do you know if we'll get one this season um, money really Chris nothing because when they got hammers and everything went up a notch Everton had a value for the sleeve and no one met it and they've done the, they've got the same this summer they've got a value that they think it's worth um, and if Nobody meets it. They won't. They simply won't have one for the sake of having one, uh, because they feel like it devalues the rest of the space. Um, they've obviously got a, a scale of what's worth what, and if I don't know, say you charge a company two million pound a year for argument's sake for for having their name on your sleeve, which is everywhere, every picture, um, and they come to you and say we're only paying one point two then why should Everton go, yeah, all right, then we'll take that million because you're devaluing what that value is. If you've decided that that bit of real estate, if you like, on your shirt is worth £2 million, then why would you sell it for £1.2 million? So I think Everton are basically saying that's our value and we ain't going below it. Um, if someone matches their value, Everton will have a sleeve sponsor this season. But us as fans, we look and go, well, if they got one, you know, £2 million, a year, there's six million over a three-year deal. It's money coming in, it all helps. And it does all help, you're absolutely right. But Everton would say, well, if your house was worth 100 grand, would you sell it for 50 or 30 or 70? You wouldn't. Um, Carl says, afternoon, Baz, you think if Moise Keane stays, he could do well? I think, he, I think Moise Keane, quite clearly, has got loads of talent. Um, it's where we play him and how we play him. I think can, if we play 4-2-3-1, do we trust them enough to get back and defend like we do with Richarlison on the other side? If the answer is yes, fine. He can play there. And I know he's played there at times for PSG. He can play through the middle. Is he a better target man than Dominic Calvert-Lewin? No. Uh, would he score more goals over the season than Dominic Calvert-Lewin? It's debatable. Dom got 21 last year. Um, but there's definitely a, a player in there and there's definitely a goal scorer in there. So if he did stay, then yeah, I think I think you, he, if he got his head down and worked hard, and he should be because he's got the World Cup coming up next season, um, then I think, I think, yeah, he could do quite well for Everton, to be fair. Uh, Andrew Wallace says, Richie off the left, Bailey off the right with Towns and then Gray's cover would be decent. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Martin, I've, I don't know when the training kit will be available, to be honest with you, mate. Um, if I remember, I'll try and chase it up for you. Um, Neil Carr says, uh, hi, Baz from the Philippines. Um, Dumfries right back and a striker with left side of midfielder, but only if we sell a few players. Real options, unless we sell Keane for 40 mil. Yeah, the, the right-back is the priority, and that's why I think Everton let it be known to Raiola that they were prepared to move away from Dumfries, uh, and they did have other options. 
And that, like I said before, there has been a softening from both sides now, which means that it is a possibility. So therefore, if we get him, I think he's a, he'd be a really good, a really good signing for us. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, Liam Young says, "What's your thoughts on Saint Maxim? I'd be concerned of his injury record." Yeah, I, Everton. I can't see Everton going for Alan Saint Maxim. Newcastle had won. Six fifty million for him or something to be. He's not worth fifty million pound. I don't think there's better options, much much better options to me. Um, where are we? Joe Briggs doesn't like Moise Keane. Fine, fine. Um, Neil Carr says, "Who in the right mind will pay good money for some of our players?" Well. We don't know, do we? That's the that's the thing. You've got to... At the end of the day, there are players and we want to sell them. So if people think they're good, they'll pay the money. If they don't, then they'll remain squad players for us, won't they? That's that's about the size of it, really. Um, but people will look and go, well, I can use him and I could use him and Everton don't play him right or whatever. You'd always do that with players you aren't getting games. It's why how you end up buying players. You don't always buy players who are the stars in, in teams. You'll buy players you can't get in other teams. And why? They can't get in that team. Why should they get in our team? But there might be a way you play that suits them. So for other teams, they might look at Everton. They might look at a, a Fabian Dell for argument's sake and go, we can actually play him this way and it'll work. Ma, uh, Maz A says, is the ideal scenario for a Wobi to go and we sign another explosive winger while keeping Keane as a backup striker? Quite possibly, but it's whether or not someone comes in for a Wobi, isn't it? Uh, do you think we'll sign a centre mid this window? I hope we do another mobile one. I don't know is the real answer at the minute for the simple reason that the way the regulations are... Um, there's options. Papa Sar is another one who's been mentioned. The place for Mets. He's only young. He could be developed into a good player for us. Um, it just depends how the money is, really. But I think they're just trying to get certain pieces of the jigsaw in place. And that is putting crosses in and stuff like that. And that's why they've identified Townsend on a free. And uh, obviously, Damari Gray as well. Uh, Keith says, if no Dumfries then, or Baku, then Dallas at United still for a low fee. I wanted him a year ago when he was available at 10 million, went to AC and impressed. Not sure the fee is the same as United, do not do us any favours. Yeah, that lot's decent as well. Uh, Steve says, I Baz, hope you enjoyed your weekend in Wales. I did. Uh, it's glad to see Everton going for value signings. Might be an unpopular view, but I think Everton should stick to FFP and reset the club slightly by improving, investing in the academy, sports science recruitment, etc., and Rafa and Dunk to drag everything out the current squad. Well, they, they're going to have to, Steve, because I don't think it's going to change yet. Um, I still think they want to improve because you've still got to have your targets because if you finish higher up, you get more prize money, you get a chance of being Europe, um, which, again, more money through sponsors, so you do have to have that. Um, but at the moment, we've got no choice, really, but to try to adhere to the rules because they're the rules in place and you hope to make a big you know a big sale and you reinvest and the next summer you hope to make a big big sale then you reinvest again and if you do that like Leicester have done pretty soon you get on the right footing where you can actually be on the front foot going after players you really want uh, Adam Lilford says uh, but some money for a sleeve sponsor is better than none it can't though Adam you can't just drop your value because then how do you take the value back up That's, that's the way they'll look at it. They'll say, we've got a price for it. You've got a price for something. You can't drop it because then you can never raise it. So just taking anything, I think, devalue. I th well, I think that's Everton's view. It devalues um, what, they, what their space costs to rent, I guess. Um, and that's, that's the way they'll look at it. Uh, right, we're going to do another couple of minutes. Make sure you hit that like button. It would be massively appreciated. You've all come here 
to uh, join in in the comments, which is fantastic. So give it a like. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Thank you very much. Um, where are we? True Blue Order says, Brilliant channel, Baz. Just not sure about Townsend, though. Not Listen, again, like I said right at the start, mate, he's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. There's no question about that. He's a squad player. If he comes in and does well with low expectation, then we'll all be pleased, won't we? Because at the end of the day, we all want to, when our players put that kit on and go out and play, we all want them to do well, surely. And if Everton can get a couple of these lads who come in and overperform, if you like, then we'll be absolutely delighted, won't we? Because it means we'll be doing better as a club, which is what we all want. Um, Joe says a USM to sponsor. Um, where are we here? Dean Henderson says, uh, sorry, David Henderson, not Dean Henderson. He's not just finished training at United and thought he'd come on and see what's happening at Everton. David Henderson says, uh, how many players have Everton bought for decent money spent only to lend out and then sell for a pittance? Exactly, David. And this is the this is the problems that are hindering us now because of what we've done in the past. We're now getting caught on this end because we can't get rid of some of these players who are, are clogging up the wage bill as well. Um, Chris Warby says, these signings remind me of the Moyes era, like Neville, Gibson, Pienaar, etc. You've got, to, you've got to cut your cloth accordingly. So rather than sitting there going, well, let's hope that we make we sell Moyes Keane and let's hope that we sell Alex Awobi. And if we do, we can spend £115 million because of the way it works and blah, blah, blah. And that doesn't happen. And then these players move off to clubs and you get to the end, last week in August, going, we needed a winger, a cheap winger. We needed someone to pad that out and we didn't do it. I actually think it looks like the semblance of a plan, which is not really what Everton have had. And therefore, you know, someone like Andros Townsend might not be the worst in the world. I remember Everton's, this is, I'm not predicting the same outcome, but I remember Everton signed Paul Power in 1987. Um, I was a kid, but I remember lots of Everton Dars, if you like, if you like kicking off about it, even though he'd been a good player for City, but we got him at the end of his career, and he came in, and Everton won the league, and he was fantastic, played loads of games, was pivotal, almost in Everton winning the league that year. I remember us signing Richard Goff on a free, Walter Smith got him, and people were slating it, what are we getting him for? I'm sure he was 37 at the time, and it was like, Jesus, this is where we are now. And Goff come in and was absolutely fantastic for a couple of seasons. So sometimes those players where you're a bit like, who's this we're getting? Or why are we signing this player? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But the manager knows this player in terms of Townsend. Um, he's played in the Premier League. So listen, he's, he's coming in as a squad filler. If he does well, great. If he doesn't, then we've had no outlay other than his wages. And like I said before, we've been paying Mo Bezic since 2016. I don't think he's played a competitive game for Everton since then. So, um, Sol says Townsend, the exact type of player Everton have too many of. Fair enough, Sol. Fair enough. Um, Robert says, Robert Workman says, Andros Townsend is a dangerous player that I've rated for some time. Feels rather like when we sign Pat Nevin. Scorer of the best goal I've seen at Goodison. Uh, the Waffler says, what has Brands done to get all the praise he gets? I don't know. I don't know. Some people, I think, I don't know. Uh, Ali Shaker says, do you think we'll sign Chuck Weezy, Bailey or McNeil after already buying Townsend and Gray? Well, it depends what the manager thinks. If the manager thinks that Everton um, need a fast, explosive winger, then he will still go for Bailey. Townsend and Gray will be options off the bench or, you know, will play in different roles at times. Um, or McNeil, if he looks at him. So, it just depends what the manager thinks. He might look and go, we just simply haven't got enough attacking options. If he, if he wants rid of Bernard and if Moise Keane goes, then already Everton's squad is lighter as it is. We didn't have really any attacking options last season. A Wobie could go. We don't know, do we? So you've got to have those plays in place. I'd rather Everton 
look, I'd rather us look at Everton's bench and go, we've got four or five players on that bench that can change a game. They mightn't be amazing players, but they can come on and, and make the system a bit different. Whereas right now, everything is always, he's the same as him. He's the same as him. There's no real options. That's what we were saying most of the season, last season. So we, I don't think we can complain when we're trying to give ourselves more options, personally. Um, Andrew Wallace says, uh, do you think we are adopting more of a money ball approach looking for undervalued players? Three players for the reporter, total one and a half million. Just imagine, right? Imagine Everton um, got the Marty Gray in for a couple of seasons and he come in and done really well. But and we, his value then goes from one and a half million to 15 million, say. Because he only 20, just turned 25 a couple of weeks ago. And Everton are like, right, okay. You know, someone comes in because Everton are looking at, or Everton have got Leon Bailey or whoever. Or Anthony Gordon all of a sudden goes up a couple of levels and Everton are like, we're ready, we can let, we can let Damari Gray go here. Someone comes in and goes, we'll give you 15 million for Damari Gray. Then it's, it's been worth it, hasn't it? We've got someone in for one and a half million, sold them for 15. The FFP for that is fantastic. Goes against, it's exactly what you want to be doing. So for me, that's a no-brainer, really. For one and a half million for that age. The Townsend one, I understand people's thing, but... Um, KUEFC says these deals remind me a little what we did under David Moyes Chris Warby says Moyes for these type done these type of signings worked out okay um, absolutely uh, Mark D says over 800 watching guys help the channel out hit the like button it only takes a second thank you very much Mark right the last going to just race through these last few now um, don't forget give the footy channel uh, the footy show channel a subscribe if you if you want to and also if you just like general football we do lives over on there as well and talk more about general footy not just Everton uh, James Dunlop said like I said earlier Gareth Barry and Garner were signings people were not convinced with and they were boss um, we did sign Etu towards the end of his career to be fair that didn't quite work out um, Blue Boy says doesn't affect our transfer budget at all no risk what's the issue Basic Trigonometry says, sign up to Patreon. There's the link. Cheers, mate. Um, Robert says, hi, you mate. Thanks, you and the boys doing a good job. Thanks a lot. Um, where are we? Kieran Morgan says, need wingers desperately, even if these are back up, we are still short. Well, we are. I don't think there's any doubt about that, really. Um Paul says, uh, question is, do these deals tell us where we're headed this season? If so, it's going to be 8th to 12th again. Well, we don't know, do we? Because if the manager's got a plan, you know, and Everton teams don't really have plans or haven't for the last few years. So if the manager's got a plan, then who knows how it'll work out. It's easy to say this will be rubbish, that'll be brilliant, this will be good, that'll be crap. We don't know. We just have to wait and see. Um, William Rimmer says the Townsend transfer gives me Aaron Lennon vibes. Yeah, maybe, maybe. We'll wait and see as it all plays out. Right, that's us done. Done a bit longer than we were going to, but there you go. Lots to talk about today. Like I say, hit that like button before you go. Subscribe if you haven't. We'll be back tomorrow. And uh, if you are a patron, we'll see you later. Take it easy. Bye.